And then when Secretary Mattis came in and he said, we're going to annihilate the enemy, and uh, Secretary Mattis and I were on a stage together, and he was talking about annihilating. There's a bunch of Marine Lance Corporals in the front row, and he's talking in words this long, and they're kind of looking at me like the enlisted guy, like, right, yeah. can you explain what the fuck he's saying? Yeah. And so I said, you know, that's when Surrender or Die started. I said, hey, that means we're going to, you know, keep, you know, dropping bombs on the enemy with great JTACs like Chachi and, and shoot him in the face or beat him to death with our entrenching tools. And it never went anywhere. It was just me inspiring the troops and till I was in Bagram, Afghanistan on Christmas Day, and Dunford and I were up on stage, and Medal of Honor recipient Flo Groberg is with mm. us. It's a USO tour. Flo's been on the show before. Great guy. Yeah, great yeah. guy. So Flo and I had entrenching tools in our hands, and I got up there, and I fired up the audience and told them we're going to beat them to death with e-tools. Well, there was a Washington Post reporter in the audience. You know, this little, short, balding, fat guy with you know, crew serve cameras around his freaking shoulders and everything. And he comes up to me and he says, you know, you just, uh, you know, are telling troops to go out and commit war crimes. I said, the fuck I am. We teach battlefield airmen, soldiers and Marines, how to use non-lethal, you know this, right. non-lethal means uh, to neutralize threats and kill the enemy. And he said, well, I'm going public with this. And I said, knock yourself out. <laughs> and then when I walked away, I thought, oh shit, he's a far left reporter. Mm -hmm. So I called up my public affairs guy. I got to give him a shout out. He is the public affairs guy for VFW, Mass Sergeant Retired Rob Couture. He has a podcast. Go to VFW and check him out. But I called up Rob, who was back home on Christmas at Fort Meade, opening presents mm -hmm. with his kids. And I said, hey, this asshole just uh, told me he's going public with Surrender or Die. And he said, let's beat him to the punch. He said, have the chairman's photographer send me a photo of you holding mm -hmm. an e-tool. I'll do the quote that you always use, and we'll put it on all social media platforms. Right. And when that happened, it went viral. And the troops loved it. I was getting messages from Somalia, from Special Forces Group commanders saying, thank you. I was getting messages from uh, photographers that worked for the president and the vice president that I knew that were saying, they love it over here. It's the message that needs to be sent. But the Pentagon, there were some people that took offense to it. And across the United States and in Congress, there were some folks that took offense to it. And so this went down a road of where um, Washington, D.C. and the Pentagon was not as, as uh, comfortable as a place for me to work. And uh, it ended up with me getting a complaint against me for, you know, hostile and toxic uh, work environment, torturous language and stuff like that. And uh, That's and I was, if they have to create a new phrase yeah. for what you did, then you didn't do anything. Yeah. By the way. Yeah. Well, Just for everybody out there, if you get accused of something and it's an accusation you've never heard of before, you're like, what the fuck does that mean? Yeah. You didn't do shit wrong. So I was suspended for six months and, and uh, I was in a closet and I had a TV and I had a computer. I read 27 books and I watched every episode of every season of Moonshiners. Mm. So Ross, if you need some, uh, you know, cherry bounce or something, or oh or yeah, Dan, you know, you need some uh, cinnamon spice or something, I, I like can that, hook yeah. you up some with some good uh, moonshine. But I wasn't going to tap out. People were telling me retire. You got 37 years, and I said, fuck no, I ain't going out like this. And uh, and I stayed the course. Now, did I make mistakes? Yeah. And at that level, when the IG is investigating you, they are turning over every rock, looking to see if you've done anything wrong for years, you know. And in the end, there was some minor stuff they found, some bullshit. And uh, the chairman brought me in, the chairman counseled me, and he said, now get back to work. So I left the, the, his office, and I, I kind of did the Conor McGregor walk back to my office. Yeah. And I went about being the same leader I was, but this E-Tool Nation thing had taken off, and people started sending me entrenching tools to sign and uh, and it inspired the force in a way that the, the force needed to be inspired. And even though I went through shit and, and because I said this and then it ended up going down to other things, professional jealousy and stuff that caused me to get in trouble, I was not going to back away from that. Because guess what? I would have looked like a punk bitch myself by yeah. saying, oh, shit, they're putting heat on me, so I'm going to apologize. And at no time did Secretary Mattis or General Dunford ever come to me and say, you need to walk this back. They well, love I mean, Mattis isn't going to come talk to he somebody. He told me to keep saying the it. Fuck you, he you? said it fits his narrative. Yeah. Annihilate, you know? <laughs> so who is it? I mean, if he's the sec def at the time, why didn't he walk down to the Pentagon and tell him to shut the fuck up? Well, because it, there was a process. Somebody filed a complaint mm, against me. I see. And, uh, You've got to go through all this paperwork yeah, and, and bureaucracy it's actually, and everything else. It's actually funnier that way when it goes through the whole process <laughs> right. and he's like, meh, I don't care. 
Yeah. Do yeah. you ever have uh, visions of yourself with an e-tool uh, against that reporter from the Washington Post? <laughs> I wouldn't need the e-tool. That dude. <laughs> was it Brian seconds, Stelter? Yeah. No. No, no, was, no. He's only 35 years old, by the way. I didn't know that until last week. Yeah. 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 He looks like he's fucking 70. No, yeah. I could have danced around that dude, and he would have gassed in... 30 seconds, and then it would have been the GNP, baby, ground and pound on his ass. Man. What's the fucking point? Like, looking back at it, you know, like, hearing this? Well, it's pushing a narrative. Well, yeah, so, but, but for him, like, what's the fucking point? Well, his, his initial point was that, you know, I'm an enlisted guy that is kind of speaking out on policy, on how we should do business. And one person, it, it's a, even told me, hey, you know, uh, enlisted people are meant to be seen and not heard. And then even then, I was like, hey. Pretty we, sure the SEAC is not meant to be seen yeah, not heard. I was like, hey, <laughs> right, right. we can all be some fighting motherfuckers in here tonight yeah. Yeah. if I get another freaking comment like that on mm. me. And so, this, for, to me, this was something to showcase the power of an enlisted leader, you know, that, that I could say something about our most dreaded, insidious enemy, and it would inspire people around the globe. To the point that, you know, the German news networks, French news networks, ISIS started talking smack about me on their French propaganda page. So what did my PAO guy do? He said, let's talk smack back to him. I had 57 death threats against me, you know, uh, across social media or in other manners. So I had to have a little bit more security for a little bit, you mm -hmm. know. But in the end, it was all just what an enlisted leader does. You inspire your troops so that they can fight and win under the harshest conditions and intimidate the enemy.